After watching this video, you should be able to describe the mechanism of glucose-mediated insulin secretion starting from a rise in plasma glucose, the individual proteins involved, ultimately leading to the exocytosis of insulin along with the inactive C-peptide from the vesicle into the blood, and be able to use this model to predict effects of drugs as well as mutations. Now let's start with the pancreatic beta cell. And I always like to think about the vesicle first with the, con with the contents inside. And we know that from neurotransmitter release from nerve terminals, that the, in order to release contents from vesicles, we need a rise in intracellular calcium. And that calcium is going to come from the outside and enter the beta cell through voltage-gated calcium channels in a very similar way that we have neurotransmitter release in nerve terminals. Now, these voltage-gated channels are opened in response to depolarization. Now, unlike neurotransmitter release from nerve terminals, this isn't caused by sodium channels. This is caused by closure of potassium channels. Now, recall that cells have a high potassium inside the cell compared to the outside, and normally potassium leaves the cell causing a repolarization or hyperpolarization. And in that case, that would tend to inhibit or have a decreased opening of calcium channels. So what we want is we want to close those channels, decrease the efflux of potassium, and cause the membrane potential to become less negative and depolarize the membrane and open up these calcium channels. And these potassium channels are special because they're regulated intracellularly by ATP levels. So when ATP goes up inside the beta cell, there's nucleotide binding sites on the potassium channel which then bind ATP and cause the channel to close. Now that ATP is going to come from glucose entering the beta cell down its concentration gradient through facilitated diffusion mediated by glucose transporter type 2, which is, happens to be the same one that you could find on the liver. Now once that glucose enters the beta cell, it's phosphorylated by glucokinase to form glucose 6-phosphate, and that then makes the glucose levels inside the beta cell go back down and maintain this concentration gradient for glucose to continue to enter the beta cell and, and stimulate insulin secretion. Now once this glucose 6-phosphate is formed, it continues down the glycolytic pathway, ultimately causing a rise in ATP inside the cell. Now the reason why we are highlighting glucokinase here and not any of the other glycolytic enzymes is that this particular enzyme is defective in a rare form of diabetes that we'll discuss in the medical application section. Now the other part of this regulation of insulin secretion is that these calcium channels can be modulated by protein kinase A. Now protein kinase A phosphorylates these calcium channels much like it does in other tissues and makes it open better in response to depolarization. Because after all, these are voltage-gated channels and that is the primary stimulus. So this is going to make it uh, open better in response to the depolarization. Now where does PKA come from? Well, protein kinase A is cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase and so we need to have an increase in cyclic AMP and that's going to come from a G protein coupled receptor that has to be coupled to GS. That's going to increase adenylate cyclase activity. Now the important GS receptor on the beta cell is the glucagon-like protein or peptide 1 receptor, which is the receptor for GLP-1, a GI hormone, gastrointestinal hormone, that's secreted in response to a meal. Now GLP-1 is inactivated by dipeptidyl peptidase 4, and that terminates its action. So it's important to know not only that GLP-1 comes from the, from the gastrointestinal tract and binds this receptor, but also how its signaling is terminated. Because these particular targets are, are important considerations for some newer diabetes drugs that are available now. Now let's go look at some medical applications. And I can think of that there's four major ones that apply to this diagram. The first one we already talked about, people can have glucokinase mutations and that forms what's called a maturity onset diabetes of the young type 2. Now, MODI is a family of disorders that um, 
range from mutations in glucokinase to other proteins that are involved in insulin secretion and other even other things that are involved in the liver. Now this particular one, glucokinase, is a MODI type 2. Now I want to point out that MODI is not type 1 diabetes. These patients do not have an autoimmune attack on their beta cells. They don't have beta cell destruction. They don't have islet cell antibodies or any, any other kind of antibodies indicating damage to the beta cell. And they also don't have insulin resistance really or they're not obese. So this really is a unique form of diabetes and it's a monogenic form. And it typically shows up when uh, less than 25 years old and there's a strong family history and autosomal dominant pattern. So if we go and look at how that would work, if we had a glucokinase defect, right, we don't have uh, an absence of the enzyme, but maybe it has a reduced Vmax, maybe it has reduced function, we would have more glucose required to get insulin secretion. And so what we'd find is an elevated glucose, which is why they end up being diagnosed with diabetes, but if you measured their insulin and C-peptide levels, they'd actually be reduced. Now they wouldn't be zero, like you might see with a, once the type 1 autoimmune destruction is complete, it would just be somewhat reduced. And that would be the pattern that you'd see in a MODI type 2. And if we go back to the other applications here, these are all really drug applications. Now, the first drug application would be a class of drugs called incretin mimetics. Now, GLP-1 and other GI hormones that regulate insulin secretion are all considered incretins. And so in this case, we can have an incretin mimetic mechanism by either stimulating the GLP-1 receptor with a GLP-1 agonist or block the breakdown of endogenous GLP with a DPP-4 inhibitor. Now if we go back to our, our diagram, we can see that those drugs would either be binding to this receptor directly or blocking this enzyme here, causing an increase in endogenous GLP signaling. Now in either case, that's going to enhance this pathway, cause more phosphorylation of this calcium channel, and cause enhanced glucose-mediated insulin secretion. Now what that means is that as the glucose goes down and there's less glucose entering the beta cell, less ATP formation, less closure of these potassium channels, less depolarization, these drugs stop working. So there's sort of a uh, a protective mechanism against hypoglycemia built into, the, and built into how these drugs work because by phosphorylating this calcium channel and not opening it directly, it's just enhancing glucose mediated insulin secretion and these drugs have a very low incidence of hypoglycemia compared to other drugs that either are going to increase insulin secretion directly or just giving insulin um, by itself. So that's an important consideration for these increte mimetic drugs. Now if we go and look at the third medical application, like I said earlier, there are other drug mechanisms that can cause insulin secretion and these are called insulin secretagogues. They're broken up into their chemical structure, either they're sulfonyl ureas, I abbreviate that SU, or non-sulfonyl ureas. And in either case, they have the same mechanism which is to block those ATP sensitive potassium channels from the outside. So if we go back to our diagram, we see here's our KATP channel. There's actually a binding site on the extracellular face of this channel where these drugs can bind to and close this channel directly. And so what they're going to do is they're going to open this calcium channel and cause insulin secretion along with C-peptide. And as the glucose levels fall, these drugs can continue to cause insulin secretion. So these drugs can cause hypoglycemia at a much higher rate than these incretin mimetic drugs can because even though the glucose is falling, if those drugs are still stim um, stimulating the closure of this potassium channel, it can cause more insulin secretion and cause hypoglycemia. So that is an important difference between the secretagogue drugs that close the potassium channel directly and the incretin mimetics that modulate the calcium channel in response to depolarization. Now the final application is an observation that drugs that cause a low serum potassium or low plasma potassium tend to cause the glucose to rise a little bit in the plasma. Now this isn't a big effect. You know, people take loop diuretics and thiazide diuretics. Those are drugs that cause potassium wasting from the kidney and lower potassium a bit. 
And there is an observation that that can cause glucose to go up a little bit. It's not enough where it would be a contraindication to give these agents to diabetics. In fact, diabetics get antihypertensive drugs like thiazides all the time. It's just that um, this observation can be explained by our diagram. Now, if we lowered extracellular potassium more, we would enhance the potassium gradient for potassium exit, and that would then cause less depolarization. It would, it, by, by potassium leaving, it would hyperpolarize the cell and decrease this calcium channel opening, perhaps minimize insulin secretion a little bit, or, or, or cause a decreased insulin secretion in response to glucose. And like I said, um, this, this effect is not very dramatic, but it is an observation that could be explained by our diagram. So in summary, go back to our original uh, diagram of the beta cell, you now should be able to explain, starting from a rise in, in, in plasma glucose, using GLUT2, ATP, potassium channels, calcium channels, and, and vesicular release, along with the modulation through incretins uh, through the GLP-1 receptor and be able to l at least list these four major applications MODI type 2, glucokinase defect, increte mimetic drugs that stimulate GLP-1 receptors or block DPP-4, sulfonylurea or non-sulfonylurea insulin secretaglogs that close this potassium channel and the observation that a lower plasma potassium is associated with a little bit of a rise in plasma glucose. And that concludes the lecture on glucose-mediated insulin secretion from the pancreatic beta cell.